Okay, I'm going to show you how to use Leica Photogrammetry Suite to process low altitude aerial photographs. Uh, these will create uh, orthorectified photos and digital terrain models uh, based on the data. So to get started, we click the Leica Photogrammetry Suite button, which is located on the Erdos Imagine toolbar. This will take just a second to open. First thing we want to do is maximize this so we can see it a little better. We'll go to File, New, and I'm going to call this Project New 1. And I click, let's see, New 1, click OK. It's going to be using a digital camera geometric model. It's going to ask for some information here. For the block property setup, um, we're going to set uh, this LSR projection unknown switch. This sets to unknown projection and meters for both our units here. Uh, if you were going to use feet, you could set these numbers to feet. Then we'll choose next. We don't need to touch any of these uh, buttons except for this average flying height which is approximately 45 meters uh, for the data we've got and we want to edit the sensor type and this is where we're going to tell it the information about the camera we have. Uh, this happens to be a Canon 5D um, at about 24 millimeters. Uh, these you can type anything you need there but for the focal length you'll want to enter the numbers that you have from your camera calibration report. Again, that can be acquired from other software. Uh, I use Photo Modeler um, to do that, uh, but there are some free utilities on the internet that can give you the same numbers. Uh, you have to be a little careful because the principal point numbers uh, are sometimes uh, different in the different packages. But I'll enter the principal point in the X and Y direction here. Now I'm going to click OK, and then OK. Next we want to set up our block properties, so go to Edit, Block Properties, and we're going to set our standard deviations here. Um, these numbers um, are typically a, a lot higher uh, as defaults because they're dealing with photographs taken from extremely high elevations. For us, we're much closer to the ground, so we're looking at a 10 centimeter standard deviation in the X direction, 10 centimeter in the Y, and a 5 centimeter in the Z. Uh, these numbers uh, oftentimes will actually be a lot smaller than this, but I, I found that these uh, tend to work really well. So we click OK. I'm going to save this project. Next I'm going to add frame under edit. I'm going to navigate to where I have a couple of images. And we'll go down here. It's going to be image 375 and 377. These are of an archaeological site in South Korea. We want to click the plus sign next to images and highlight one of these. And then we want to go to properties. And we need to determine the interior orientation. Um, this is the pixel size of the sensor in microns that was used to photograph uh, the images. Again, this is available from the uh, camera calibration report normally. So, and I'll click apply all frames. Now we have um, this column here is turned green. Normally when I add a photograph, uh, this pyramids layer is red, uh, but because I've added these before, they already have pyramids. Uh, yours probably won't have pyramids, so you want to go to Edit, Compute Pyramid Layers, and then All Images Without Pyramids. And this will turn green if, if it was red for you previously after a couple of seconds. I'm going to click Save again. Next, I'm going to click the start point measurement tool. It'll ask me which type I want to use. I want to use classic point measurement tool. Click OK. Now we're going to add ground control points. 
uh, you'll see we have a left image, which is image 375 and 377 on the right. Now this is a little awkward the way this works, um, and there's probably some easier way, and I just don't know how to do it. But uh, we, for our ground control file, control point file, we have a set of Excel data that was uh, shows us the coordinates for each of the ground control points. Um, so we have this X, Y, and Z. Now um, for lack of photogrammetry suite to read this file properly, we actually have to format it uh, into an ASCII file. Let me see if I can find that real quick. Uh, okay. So here is that same data formatted into a text file. So this column 1, 2, 3, 4 through 33 is this one here. And then X, Y, and Z data are located X, Y, and Z. Now this is going to be a little complicated. For some reason, uh, like a photogrammetry suite switches their X and Y columns. So I've created another file that has that information in it. So let me close that, get this out of the way. So I clicked the Add button 33 times. And you'll see down in the lower left, uh, it's adding a bunch of blank data. So going to come down here, right click to the left hand side of these and choose Select All. And then while I'm holding the Shift key, I'm going to click Description, X, Y, and Z references. Now with the cursor over the top columns, I'm going to right click, choose Import, and then I'm going to navigate to where I have placed on my C drive the ground control point file. And that should be in here somewhere. Let's see, is that same file? Until I've got a lot on this computer. Okay, here it is. Okay, and you'll see that down here we now have the description, which is just 1 through 33, and X, Y, and Z column. Um, you'll also notice that this X and Y have flip-flopped from what they were in the Excel table here. So you see here's X, it's in the Y column, here's Y, it's in the X column. I don't know why it's like that, but this is what makes it work. Okay, so now I'm going to select the type and usage columns with the left hand side still selected, so everything is in yellow with this in green. I'm going to choose type as full. This sets all of the types as full control points and then the usage as control. So this tells the computer to use the coordinates of these points uh, in all the calculations. So I'm going to unselect this. Uh, you don't really need to do that, but just want to make it a little simpler to look at. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to choose two ground control points in each of these images. And let's see. In this case, the ground control points are these really nice looking yellow and black targets. I'm going to place the cursor uh, so that we have those two in view. I make sure that I have the number one selected because this happens to be ground control point number one. I know that because I uh, had a map showing where each of these points was uh, located. And okay, so now it's number one is chosen in both. Now I know that ground control point 17 is higher up here, so I'm going to go over here and look. See if I can find, there it is. There's 17. Get 
Again, I get these both selected. And I click the center of each. Now I'm going to choose this button here. It's called Set Automatic XY Drive. Uh, this is a pretty neat function that allows us to place um, these coordinates a little more accurately and quicker. Okay, I just noticed I had a, a problem here. Uh, I'm going to right click these and delete them. Uh, this point up here is actually number 13, so I entered the wrong one. So I can highlight 13, click these again. Okay, so now I have uh, that number uh, control point selected properly. And I can choose this drive button. Now I'm going to go down to the uh, to shot number 17. And you'll see that it drops towards this little black dot here. That can be selected. That happens to be just a different type of ground control point. And it's going to automatically drop down to the points on our map that are closest to these locations. So there's 17, 18. So I'm just going to go through and click all these. Um, not all of them are visible in this photograph, so some are going to fall off to the side. Sometimes we need to move things around a little bit to get, get it to line up. And I'll go through this as quick as possible. So that one falls off this side of the map. That one does too. This one falls on the left hand map, but not the right hand map. That's okay. We'll go ahead and mark it on the left hand map. This one falls on both. It's real easy if you don't have something uh, very distinct in the photograph to not realize what the ground control point is. But uh, these are pretty good. Okay. That's a real nice target. I like those. They're really nice and visible from the air. Just keep going, and we do this for all of our pairs. Uh, you can do more than two photographs uh, for this tutorial. I'm just going to do the two. But okay, it's looking good. And the more ground control points you have, the better. And the better they're distributed around your project area, uh, the better it will resolve. Uh, and this. This particular case is really nicely done. Okay, this is another one of the tiny black ground control points. Almost done here. Okay, and now I'm going to skip a little higher. Uh, a little higher up our uh, ground control point numbering here and just see if there's any uh, that we can add. So this one we can add. These are off the edge of the map. The way you can tell they're off the edge is the cursor's pushed all the way up to up the corner or the far side. Okay, there's one, 14. It falls on the left hand image, but not the right hand image. 15, this is one that falls on the right hand, but not the left hand. 16, okay, so we've done all of these now. 